and welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some ephemeral aggro for our first deck of the day. Um, we're gonna be playing uh, gonna be playing Callista and Hecarim as our champions. Um, it's been a while since I played a Hecarim deck, but excited to excited to do this one here. Um, you know, we're adding, we have a Callista and Hecarim. We're not going like super, super aggressive. We're kind of playing a little bit more mid rangey with, with some good interaction. We got some protection for Callista with Twin Disciplines and Spirits Refuge, and we can and if uh, and deny. And then if if uh, Callista or Hecarim do die, we have the Rekindlers to bring them back. Um, but you know, like it's we got just a a lot of good aggressive stuff. We're putting in um, Soul Shepherd in here to give our ephemeral allies plus one plus one to be able to uh, grow our haunted relics and shark chariots one great thing about this deck is the combo between haunted relic and callista because callista needs to see three allies die so if you have a callista in play and then cast a haunted relic you get three ephemeral units that they will all die and level up your callista so that's something you could even do like on your opponent's turn whenever they tap out you can then, for five mana, play a Callista, play a Haunted Relic, get your three spirits, have them all die. Your Callista is now leveled up, and then you can untap and attack with it right away. And get that going. Um, against all these burn decks running around, we got Dark Water Scourge. Pretty important card against all these burn decks to have a huge life steal, and we want to keep it around, so we want to pair it with Deathmark. Um, and plus, Deathmark can be good removal on opponent's champions that we can remove Ephemeral from one of our things, like a Haunted Relic, and give it to um, one of our opponent's things. Um, I played a couple games with this deck. Like, Bark Beast has actually looked pretty good. Um, you've been, been pretty impressed with Bark Beast. Uh, it, it's very easy to turn it into a 3-3, so you know, you're looking at like a 1-mana 3-3, and that's not bad at all. Not bad at all. All right, so let's give this a try. Um, yeah, and then also, yeah, and then also Darkwater Scourge can, can do some great blocking if you don't have the death mark as well. All right, let's definitely go to Shadow Isles. We'll pair it with Ionia, and we'll have our Gloom Tooth. So here we go. Let's go play five games over in Ranked with Ephemeral Aggro. One forty one. <laughs> so we are also playing against Hecarim. Um, I like that we have the Bark Beast Soul Shepherds to start with. Withering Whale seems really good against an Elise deck. I'll send back the Twin Disciplines for now. We don't really have anything we need to protect with it. As of yet. And how, how this game works with Ephemerals, how... Uh, Combat happens from left to right, and the ephemerals die um, as soon as they strike. So if we if we attack with them first and put the bark beast on the right, we can have the bark beast actually attack as a uh, as a three three. A tricky turn you know because we so we could make three two twos and attack with the three two twos and this three three but i'm going to further set it up by playing the soul shepherd because playing the soul shepherd also allows me to nope not yet also allows me to play this withering whale This turn, and then we'll untap and Haunted Relic next turn. So we'll 
Take six down to 14 after we gain our three. That's too bad. And now these will all be three threes instead of two twos. Didn't draw like a Callista. That would be really nice to have a Callista out here as well. Um. Could make this a 7-7 seven, seven. and just attack for 7. That may not be bad. Definitely, Mole. Yeah, I got some ephemeral aggro. Yep, yep, we're playing some shark chariots. Absolutely. Worst case scenario is they have Glimpse Beyond. That would be bad. Okay, good. No Glimpse Beyond. Be able to level up Elise. My true beauty is beneath the skin. All right, this is fine. Now we're going to play Hecarim. When Hecarim levels up, it gives all the Ephemeral Allies plus three, plus zero. That's so big. Yeah, the, the cure, uh, deck list, yeah, it's, uh, you can also, also do, always do exclamation point deck. That will send you to the deck list as well. So if I play the Onslaught of Shadows, we will level up Hecarim. Right now, we are not going to level up Hecarim whenever we attack. Um... So basically, I'll be able to play either Will of Ionia or Twin Disciplines as well. So either protect Hecarim. Yeah. Or I kind of want to bounce this Neverglade Collector. <clears throat> Now we do, now uh, all these things don't drain us. You know we don't take five damage. So that's real important. So 
So wait, you're saying you're saying the Neverglade collector is too good? Shark Chariot. I think that means I'm dead. Sure looks like it. Elise is still really good. Close game though, GG's. They outlasted us. The one thing that was like really important in that game was were the bark beasts. Like both bark beasts got vile feasted, and uh, you know, so those vile feasts killed both bark beasts and also made spiders that did a good job blocking and doing all the the stuff with Elise. You know, flipping Elise, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, that that really hurts having a card that traded with just half of a vile feast and having that twice. That really hurt. Doing okay. I mean, that's our yeah. We just uh, just played that first game there, Mole. That was our first game. Here's game number two. All right, we got Hecarim. We again have this Bark Beast, Soul Shepherd start. I'm kind of worried that this is basically the exact same kind of deck. This is a lease and a bunch of ways to go wide. Get rid of this. <laughs> yeah, they did have a bunch of crawling sensations, and yeah, then the. The other uh, five mana card make three spiders. Like they were able to go real wide, for sure. That hurt, and that's what I'm worried about with this deck potentially. Hey QQ, hope you're having a good weekend. Brood Awakening. It's a good card. Um, good card. Do you have Withering Whale? So that's great. But not using that one yet. <laughs> you tried your ephemeral deck with un with the unyielding splash from Demacia. Saying it's hilarious when it works, but not great overall. I could certainly see that. Um. No. Oh, I don't know why I didn't glimpse beyond there. I definitely should have. Yeah, I definitely should have glimpsed beyond there. I was thinking I was planning on Withering Wailing, but still, I don't know, because like I did have the mana to do both, but I probably should have just glimpsed beyond and waited on Withering Whale. What I want to happen here, I'm glad they're tapped out, I really want them to play Vi. That's what I've been hoping. I want them to go turn 5 Vi, and that, that isn't something that you want to happen very often. But want that to happen because we'd have the Scourge Deathmark combo on the buy. Doesn't look look like it.
Why did you have that previously? I really wish I would have just used that glimpse beyond on turn four. Could have certainly been different. Instead of using another glimpse beyond him, turning that twin disciplines into one. Try with Hecarim again. Spark Beasts haven't been looking so good this time. I wanted to play Bark Beast first and seeing if they would like tap a bunch of mana and maybe not have something to answer Hecarim. to think about what what could possibly be better than this card because yeah it's it's been two matches of looking really bad but then again i guess it is it is against like you know shadow shadow isles that spe specializes in dealing one damage that is the matchup that it's been playing Hopefully this works this time. Nope, not this time. So again, a two for two trade. I can bounce the Dark Water Scourge, but... At this point, with two death marks already being gone, I feel like Will of Ionia is probably a better card to have in hand than Darkwater Scourge. And that's great. And now I'm glad I have the Will of Ionia, so like I can bounce Rekindler and replay Rekindler and get more Hecarims. So there we go. Or, let's see, if I bounce Ledros, this is going to be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, plus 4 is 12. We'll attack for 12. And I'll be at 8. Enough. 
Still needed one more ephemeral attack. We were so close. Leveled up Hecarim. Would have ended that. So now we need to just kind of rely on... Withering Will to maybe save me, keep me alive if they have four points of burn. They should be attacking. Yep. So I got to block. I can't play Hunted Relic to block either because fearsome. Hmm. So just go straight to attacks or play stuff pre-combat. If I go straight to attacks, they have to have like... I have to have a couple of removal spells. Hmm. Hey, Blade. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to play stuff pre-combat or not. Because the thing is, is, I don't really feel like we're going to have another turn. I think, like, this has to be... This has to be it. We'll go to attacks, though. Hecarim does has does have overwhelm, remember. So like that is an, another three damage, and if need be, I can make it one more point of damage. Nope. <laughs> Hello, Brazil. Welcome. So close. Ledros Atrocity is just such a great combo. Dang. Maybe I need to wait. Hey, thank you, Blade. Maybe I needed to wait on um, on that Will of Ionia, maybe? I don't know. Without that Will of Ionia, like they would have blocked, they would have, you know, killed the Hecarim on, with blocking before. Twisted Fate, Gangplank. I want to find Callista. Where's, why don't we ever draw Callista? Hey, new Bloco. Alright, there's a deny. That's good. By that's good, I mean, that would have been good to have last game. We'll see if it's actually good this game. Gonna try to grow this thing from being just a 1 1. No. Bark Beast. 
is just feeling more and more unplayable. It at least traded with a spell. But now this haunted relic doesn't really change, trade with the spell. At least haunted relic is uh, starting to level up the Hecarim. That's, that's good news. Three out of seven. Looks like we're banking our mana this turn. Not good. Not good at all. Yeah, you don't want to cross me. Just don't really have anything to do. I want to cast this just to use mana. It doesn't do anything. Boys, got a surprise for him. Okay, we got another Bark Beast. <laughs> they took a Bark Beast. So our Withering Will did a little bit more. Dang, should have waited. Should have waited. Glad we have this backup Hecarim. It's good. I'm not. I'm not casting the onslaught of shadows. I'll be able to cast the backup whenever this Hecarim dies. Taking their time. Clear off. Who's that you got there? Surprised they're blocking with all of these. Seems like kind of weird blocks. Nope, no, haven't drawn a haven't drawn a shark yet in any game and 
Callista, right? Not really, not really getting those cards. I'm getting all the supplemental cards. Unfortunately, I'll only have two mana next turn if I want to rekindle her. Then I, I could have double Hecarim and have two Hecarims attacking. Hey, give him my shark back. Rue taking my shark. I don't think they're playing Soul Shepherd, but I guess it, it doesn't really tell you that you know, like Pilfered Good stole this card or anything. I can't imagine they're playing that. Awesome, Luru. How's it? How's it treating you? They, they really need to speed up that animation. I thought about doing the the Valfies first, take this blocker, have them play some more other stuff. Hmm. Okay, well they're killing one Hecarim, unfortunately. This one's gonna level up though, right? Yeah, five out of seven. There's probably no real reason to attack with that Spireling. I didn't think about Hecarim dies, and then those don't get the pluses anymore. Hmm. Shouldn't attack with that Spiderling. Definitely starting to feel like that was unnecessary. Yeah, that important. Yep, needed that jump blocker. No. Uh, that gives them the warning shot. Warning shots burst speed. The, the warning shot will trigger the Riptide Rex. Oh, 
Okay, so. So I have to do this to stay alive. Yeah, it puts me down to one. There's five of them on the four seven. need to gain eight life. So if I attack with Hecarim, they block Hecarim with the 2-2, two -two, and then they can take four from the other things. That does mean that they have to block the 8-5, so they, they block with these two things, they keep the 7-4. And I'm at nine. And they're at like two or three. But I have nothing and they have a seven four and a whole bunch of cards in hand. Or I don't attack. Oh, right, I had a shark chariot. You got legs. You I forgot about the shark chariot. The sharks, they, they block. Hmm. Yeah, they may have had to just block with the Rex then. And I could have got four damage across. Five damage across. This could work, though. Sorry, shark. I gotta forget to forget about you. I, need more I feel like we're pretty lucky to still be alive right now. Anyway, with that Riptide Rex, you know, staying at one. Look, since I attacked with that Spiderling. Dang. They're three for three on Yordle Grifters. Allegiance trigger. Hitting. Oh, they have a shark also. Boom. Hmm. Can we change this Bark Beast to something else? What, what would we want to play instead of Bark Beast? So right now, Bark Beast isn't doing anything. Maybe some Iron Harbingers? The Drain 1 guy. You're going to have to be more specific than that. Oh, Neverglade Collector?
I could see playing Neverglade Collector. I don't know if we have enough um, self-kill stuff for Cursed Keeper. Self-sacrifice. Try Neverglade Collector. No, Ninja, it's, it's good. It's good. We, I mean, we're... We're right here in these games. Even though they're not going our way. Alright, so Withering Whale is pretty good if they have, you know, like, if they're doing all the spider stuff. But I'm not sure if I just want to start with that in my, my opener. It's possible I should be mulliganing this uh, Neverglade Collector also just because it's, you know, again, it's just a 5 mana card. I want the attack token though. Now, I would like to, since especially how I have two Neverglade Collectors in hand, I wanted to wait on the Haunted Relic. Like, I could have just let that happen, play Haunted Relic, and attack with everything. But I feel like I want to wait a little bit for these. And, and now we have this Callista. I can make, Callista can make things interesting. No. Yeah, yes. Okay, yeah, the the blighted caretaker. Yeah, that that would also Yes, that yeah, that would have some good synergy as well. All right, so it is our attack turn. If I just play Neverglade Collector, it's just like uh you know, like we don't get to do anything else. We'll play this. At least our dead our dead sharks are still getting some value for us. Vi does complicate some things. So, ten mana. We can do all of this. plan is this, the Haunted Relic, and the Death Mark. Perfect. I didn't want to do Haunted Relic first and have them think about Withering Whale. Uh... 
Okay, do I actually wait on Haunted Relic? No, let's see. So they they block the two sharks. Take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, they certainly could have another Vi in hand. Can't can't do anything about that. Okay, we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. Let's see. Can't bring back the sharks. They kill anything they take, you know, they're gonna take some damage. This leaves them at two. This will kill them. So we'll make another spider, so they take four for the two spiders. That's pretty annoying. Kind of want to pass and see what they do. Okay. So worry about like Karina Veraza. Want to make sure that I stayed above, you know, like where Ledros doesn't just kill me. I know what lurks in the 
shadow. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's why they kept on saying good game, because I guess their hand was just great. Why couldn't I have drawn Deny last turn instead of Soul Shepherd? We would have had the win. If we would have just, or, you know, if, if we had Deny instead of Soul Shepherd. So close. So close a few times. It's like, what if I would have... Like, I think that the turn that I didn't play, like, Rekindler or Callista, you know, before combat, like, where they kill all my Neverglade collectors and stuff. Like, that turn, I guess I need to play more things. You know, like, obviously, like, you have to be worried about, um, re uh, Ruination. Which makes things kind of difficult, you know, if I would have just played Rekindler and then they would have Ruination. To think how bad we would have felt. And so I went to attacks, but it, you know, they just had enough, um, life gain and removal you know, and specifically with the life gain to stay alive. Now the the grasp would not, yeah, the the barrier would have kept the the grasp of the undying from gaining life. So if we would have had Deny for the Withering Whale, also. Yeah, we need Deny plus Barrier instead of Barrier plus the that 2-3. Yeah. I don't want any of these. Or if we just had like one more ephemeral thing for the sharks, but I mean, I guess they've been—they were just sitting on those withering whales. That's why they were saying good game, I suppose. Very close. All right, I like that we have this combo: Callista plus Haunted Relic. It's even worth attacking. You, th you think this emote means well played? You think my opponent was saying well played with that emote? As far as I know, that emote means like good game, like. I'm going to win. The game's over. I can't wait till they patch that pilfered goods and have it speed up. So of course I could attack with Callista after you know afterwards have Callista be a five four, but I also just don't really need to like they would block with fearsome frenzied skitter and then use like a one damage thing, um, to, to make me use the twin disciplines. I feel like I'd rather just kind of keep twin disciplines for protection before that and not just be priced into using it on the to trading with the skitter by attacking that turn. I'll make corpses of them all. That sounds rude. Mm -hmm. Bounce? Question mark? I 
All right, we bouncing. It's like I want to play Hecarim, but I also want to just go straight to attacks. Um, I guess the best thing that's died for me is just a 2-2. go so i think i was going to i think i was going to glimpse beyond there because i got to um use the uh the vulnerability to have like i was gonna have Callista pull the vulnerable thing close to it there we go got one and got the noxus card back for a reward so there we go. Um, all right, so I did like the Neverglade Collector more than the One Drop. Definitely liked Collector, how we changed that uh, later on. The Bark Beast, um, you know, I, was, I thought Bark Beast was going to be pretty good, but it just consistently... Um, like, it, it basically never traded with cards. It was just getting Vile Feast or Withering Whale every single time. Um, yeah, so Shadow Isles, like, we we kind of experienced what it's like to have such a burn-heavy metagame in these games, to be honest. Because we did just keep facing Shadow Isles the whole time, and shadow owls decks that were built to have a lot of life gain and removal for early creatures and stuff like that and it did make our life pretty difficult because that's uh the shadow owls decks were built to be to burn aggro but we actually kind of go right into their crosshairs you know with our shark chariots and haunted relics and and things like that um you know like they're they're pretty easy like they're they're pretty able to get rid of a lot of our threats all the time um, for how, how those games, you know, for the decks that we were playing against, Deny would have, was really good and wouldn't, would not have minded having a third Deny at all. Um, Rekindler was awesome to go along with Hecarim and Callista, because Hecarim was dying pretty easily, but just had lots and lots of removal. And our threats don't, like, our Shark Cherry can keep coming back if we have more Ephemerals to attack with, but we don't necessarily have just a complete abundance of Ephemerals anyway um but i don't think this deck was too bad like you know like we were you know we were in master's rank and we were playing lots of close matches like there was probably three of those four that were real close that could have gone either way you know like an, an atrocity you know not here or you know like one more protection spell there or you know things like that could have really turned around some of those games But there we go. All right, so that's Ephemeral Aggro. That's our first deck of the day. We got some more coming up. We got Sea Monster Control up next. Those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. If you're having success with some Ephemerals, feel free to leave a comment. Let me know what your deck looks like. Um, if you're doing some, if you're having success with uh, Callista and Hecarim, you know, like if you're you're playing those two champs, you know, leave those comments. All right, but thank you so much for watching some Ephemeral Aggro, and I'll see you for the next video.